Good morning, everybody. How are we all this morning? Up bright and early on this Sunday morning, I hope. Just bear with me a second while I get my iPad going here and turn down the volume. Just bear with me a second. Because, God, I can hear myself. Okay. Good morning, Delphina. Good morning, Tina. How are you, girls? Good, 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 I hope. Um, so this morning as part of the... Good morning, Tony. Uh, good morning is everybody who's watching. I'm not going to go through the list as everyone tunes in because that's just going to do my head in um, and yours. Um, as part of the Great Australian Craft Show this morning and the Craft Alive event for the weekend, I'm going to be doing a little, um, a little bit of colouring with the new paper row stamps which came in Friday. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous new designs here. Um, uh, designed by my lovely, lovely friend Kasha and I thought I would go through and just do some simple colouring using Lindy's and show you how to make a couple of super simple cards and hopefully show you that they can be really, really easy to create and uh, talk to you a little bit as uh, about what I've got available in store over the weekend some of the specials that you can get and um, yeah, just let's make some pretty things. So, so this morning here in front of me, I have a collection of the Lindy's Gang Magicals. So over the weekend, I've been demonstrating with these guys and uh, you, I'm not going to bang on about it because nobody needs to hear that. But basically these, what I have here in front of me are the Lindy's pigment dye based powders that uh, they, all of these ones here have a beautiful shimmer to them so these are going to create some amazing colors uh, on, on our papers and create some cards so first thing I'm going to do I have got the new it's your day clear stamp from paper rose and I have pre-stamped on plain cardstock and watercolor cardstock using black archival ink so the difference between these two cardstocks this is the watercolor cardstock <clears throat> excuse me this is the watercolor cardstock so what this means is the water is going to that we're going to add to this in a moment the water is going to sit on this a little bit better than what it's going to sit on with this plain cardstock so this cardstock here is just the plain card that I create my cards out of. So if you buy a pack of 10 cards with envelopes off the website, this is the card that I use um, for that. So it's a lovely thick, it's about a 300 GSM as well. It's got a really, really nice weight to it. So um, this is a 300 GSM watercolor paper. The GSM means it's got a bit of weight to it. It's not a flimsy paper. Uh, so I've actually sold out of the A4 pads over the weekend, but what I have just released is a 10 pack of 6x4s. So you can buy a 10 pack of 6x4s, which is this size here, ready to go for your card making. So that is super simple and easy for you to jump online and um, grab over the weekend. And I put them on special because, you know, that's how I roll. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I might just quickly show you how to create a couple of simple backgrounds first and then I'm going to colour this image. I think that might be the best. So on my watercolour paper, um, I'm going to do the sprinkle and spritz technique. So in front of me I have got my water spray. I, this is just super fancy Adelaide water not fancy uh, and I do like the spray bottles that have got the trigger so these are available online not this brand but another brand which are equally as good um, for I think four dollars each so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a background here on this little guy so these are the shakers the magical shakers they have a flip top making it nice and easy 
to put it onto your paper. And I'm just gonna create a single one color background here. So all I'm gonna do is just lightly sprinkle the powder straight on top like that. Now it is a powder, so it does mean I need to activate it. So with my fancy Adelaide water, I'm going to just spray straight on the top, just like that. The more water you add, the more the pigments come together, creating this beautiful color. If the less water I add, of course, the less is gonna to come together and I'm going to get this beautiful um, kind of speckled sort of look. So this can look really, really amazing. And I can just pop that aside to dry. But what I might do, because I can't leave it alone, I wanna add this purple. So this is French Lilac Violet. Exactly the same product, different packaging. And here in front of me, I've just got a, a dry fan paintbrush. And I'm gonna take the lid off. You can see how beautiful and vibrant that purple is. And I'm gonna sprinkle a little over the top. So just dipping my paintbrush in and just rubbing my finger over it. And you can see that that powder is activating straight away. Like that is so freaking good. I still do need to add a little bit of water just to activate that. Oh yeah, that looks great. All right, so it, the more water I add, the more it's gonna to blend together, but I'll put that one aside to dry. Won't be a second, I'll just do that. Now, if I was to do this on plain cardstock, which is just normal everyday plain cardstock. I'll use exactly the same colors to show you that it will also work. And again, just a little sprinkle and give it a light mist. But the water doesn't move around as much because this paper is more porous and it's going to soak in a lot quicker. You do get a slightly different effect. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that purple. Beautiful. And I still need to activate that color now. So no matter what, I'm still going to need to dissolve all of these little chunky bits here. So that's looking pretty good. So I've got an instant instant card front to, um, to then stick elements onto, to stick die cuts onto, to do lots of really cool things and um, I can cut them out. I can do all sorts of bits and pieces. So I'm just gonna pop that one aside as well and get onto the good stuff, which is the coloring. So with this, I'm just gonna zoom my camera up a bit if I don't completely mess this up. Um, I just have to take it out of the holder. Sorry, girls, nothing's easy this morning. Ah, oh, whoops, good morning. No, it doesn't want to do it for me. All right. Radio. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll just suck it up. And deal with it. So I have got down here in the background, I've got my puppy training pad, which is my go-to um, drop mat. It helps me clean up my mess and I wipe my brush off. But I've also got here uh, a glass, like an acrylic block, and I'm going to use that to as my little mixing, my little mixing well here. So I have got here some of the Bougainvillea fuchsia. Just off camera here in front of me, I've got my water well. What I'm going to do is put my brush into here and on my acrylic block, put some powder and make up a little, uh, a little wash of color. And now I'm gonna put my lid back on that because you really, really, really don't want that to tip over. So now the more water I add, the more intense my color becomes on here. And what I'm going to do is I have pre-stamped this image with black archival ink. 
So I had to use black archival ink because it is waterproof. If I was to use something like a Distress Oxide or a Distress Ink, that colour would run and as soon as I added water to it and um, I would lose the integrity of my image. So I have got this little wash of colour here and what I'm going to do is just paint this dress. So it's essentially working like a watercolour. But what I'm going to do to make this look super pretty is grab my water spray and I've got my uh, paper tilted and just give it a spray so that it drips down my page. And that is looking pretty amazing. Let it drip off. And I can just use a wet paintbrush to help those drips move around. I can tone it down if I want to. I can bleed it out a little, like so. And I'm really, really loving that. So I've got to colour the bodice in now. And I'm lightly going to just add a little colour with my brush. Like so. Oh, good morning, Cheryl. I see you watching me there this morning. How is everyone this morning? We doing okay for a Sunday morning? Good. All right, so I'm just going to pop that aside to dry. So that's on the watercolour paper. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the flat, on the flat cardstock to show you how that works. And I will use one of the shakers to show you that you can do the same thing with the shakers. So I'm going to put a little bit of the shaker on here. So this colour that I'm using is Time Travel Teal. And this is a beautiful teal colour, of course. So wet paintbrush and I need to activate that powder. A little bit more water on my brush and do exactly the same thing. So because this is not watercolour paper, I need to act a little bit quicker because it is going to soak right into the paper straight away. So the differences between the paper and I need to be decisive, not get up, answer the phone, make myself a coffee or anything like that. I just need to, to get it done. So this one, I've added a lot more water and you can see that it's bled out a lot more. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm letting, it's, it's still tilted a little so I can keep that drip going down and I'm not going up into that area. I'm now just gonna use my brush and lightly add a little color to that. Very loosely. Love me some loose color on a Sunday morning. Um, and I'm just, I'm not going to do that little, actually I'll add some pink into that V in her bodice and I'm going to pop that aside to dry. So that gives me a really cool effect as well. And you can see that I've got all of the different shades of blue. I can build on that too. I can, I can add depth to it, add a little bit more depth or I should just learn to leave it alone, but you know. So this stamp is beautiful. It would make a beautiful image for a wedding card, um, for a 16th birthday, a anything girly. It would look amazing on a scrapbook layout, a whole heap of them across the page lined up all coloured in. Oh, that's a good idea. I think I'll do that. Oh, I had an idea. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is I have pre-stamped this beautiful image from Paper Rose. So this one is called Sketched Handpicked Bouquet Clear Stamp. Um, I think this retails for about $25, $26, 15% um, off at the moment. Get on it. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. So you can see that this one is a lot more detailed with the coloring. Um, I think that this one is gonna take me a truckload longer if I decide to be super fussy about it. 
but I'm not going to be super fussy about it. Um, I'm just going to get the colour on there this morning and create something that looks really, really nice. Um, I So this colour here that I'm using, this gorgeous gold, is Bayou Boogie Gold. And you can see that beautiful colour in there. I'm just going to pop a little bit. And that, when I say a little bit, if I bring that up to camera, can you see how much I've got on the edge of my knife there? That's probably double the amount that I actually want, but it's there. So um, what other colors can I put in here? I have got this gorgeous aged copper, which is a little bit like a rose gold. I'm going to pop some of that on. And good morning, Phoebe. How are you this morning? Phoebe is watching from Japan. One of the most incredibly talented creative people that I know who just, her creativity blows my mind. Um, okay, so this is on the watercolor paper. So again, I just need to activate these colors, get them all happening here and start my coloring. So I'm going to start with this gorgeous gold. And I've got a, a thin, fine paintbrush here. Um, this one is probably maybe a little bit too thin, uh, sorry, too thick, but you know what? Let's commit to it. Um, and I'm lightly and loosely going to jump in here and watch and, and just, just get that over there. Now, with creating and colouring images like this. If I was to do this with watercolours or if I was to do this with, say, scribble sticks or um, acrylic paint or the magicals like I'm doing, I love the idea of it keeping and staying really very loose. So for me, what that means is leaving some white space in and around my images, not being perfect and coloring in inside the lines. Um, there's no need for perfection for me personally. I love the idea of that handmade look. I think that looks amazing. Um, so now you can see that starting to come together. The, what else have I got here? There's like some beautiful sort of berries going on here going to find a thinner paintbrush. And all my paintbrushes just went everywhere off camera. Okay, so I've got that Bougainvillea fuchsia that I made up earlier. I'm just going to spread that out to make that a little bit lighter and pop that on my berries. Just dot that around like so. And keeping it super simple. But what I really, really love about using the Lindy's is I can make my colours really, really super intense. Or the more water I add to them, the more they are going to lighten up. So I can make it a really, really light, a really, really light um, tone rather than a super duper bright one if I wanted to. I've got full control over what is here, what I'm coloring. Um, it is totally up to me. So now I wanna add some green. So I've got a couple of different greens here. Let's have a bit of a look and see. I've got, oh, that's a lot. Um, Cathedral Pines Green. And so that's in the Magical Shaker. And then this is that Elder, Elderweiss Moss Green, Elderweiss, oh, terrible with pronunciation. Tracy will kill me, but that's a better amount. Um, but the, yeah, my pronunciation needs a little bit to be desired. I don't think I have the right accent. I'm just popping a little dropper on there because I've got a small amount. So this beautiful green has a really lovely gold tinge to it. And I'm just going to pop that on there. Super simple. So this works with any stamp. So if you have a bit of a think about some of the stamps that you have got at home, 
And, you know, let's be honest, if you're a crafter, you've probably got a couple of stamps in your collection. Um, nobody needs to be bragging, but, you know, I know I've got a bucket load of stamps in my collection that I just don't use to their full capacity. Um, but, you know, that's... <laughs> That's the way it is. What is it? He who dry, uh, she who who dies with the most craft supplies wins. Yeah, well, you know. Moving on. All right. So a touch of green on that makes all the difference. It's making this lovely little image pop. I also need to color the inside. <laughs> I need to color the inside of my flower, and I can't decide what I'm going to do here with that. But I'm going to mix a couple of colors together to create not that color but you know what let's commit to it because it's on watercolor paper i can quickly spread it around and tone that down actually it's not bad it's working and there we go that's looking in the right direction i might pop a bit of gold over the top of that just to help it Beautiful. Yes, there we go. So it's all about using some of the things that you've got at home as well. I, uh, I've, I've, you don't have to buy all the things all the time. Um, buy craft items that you know you can use lots and lots and lots of different ways. Anyone who knows me knows that I've been using Lindy's for quite a few years and I will bang on about it for hours and hours about how great Lindy's products are, but that's because this product does lots and has lots and lots of different uses. Because it is a powder and it needs to be activated with a wet liquid, it means that I can do plenty of things with it. I can mix, with, mix it with modeling paste. I can mix it with texture paste. I can mix it with, um, isopropyl alcohol and make an alcohol ink. I can mix it with hand sanitizer because there's plenty of that getting around at the moment. There's all of these amazing things that I can mix it with to use it in my, my crafting, my everyday crafting. I have eliminated all of my other products such as I've, I've got all of the other sprays. I've got lots of different brands. I've got lots of different, um, I've had lots of different brands. But, you know, I don't need them anymore because one product for me does all of those things. Um, Geraldine just commented and said, wow, you made that look so easy. But I can't see what was so difficult about that. When you break it down to what you can see, because we totally overthink things, right? Like, seriously, unnecessary to, to overthink it, but... If I was to do, do that again in a total different colour range, it should take me under, under two minutes to colour this, right? So on my palette here in front of me, I will have the colours that I need. So I'm going to wipe this off. And, oh, just totally missed the bin. Um, I'm going to wipe this off and start again with different colours, right? Just to show you that it shouldn't take too long. So I'm going to do a different color. I'm gonna use Cowabunga Copper for my, for my flowers. What, what makes it work is I take a second to know what I'm going, to, to think about what I'm gonna do before I do it. So yes, Tina, practice does make perfect. Clearly this is not the first time I've done this, but Having a little bit of confidence in your creating also makes all of the difference. Um, Autumn Maple Crimson. So even if I just do this with four colours, right? And I'll grab a brown as well. Um, but yeah, knowing what your product does, knowing how to use your product and colouring your... Having a bit, yeah, having a bit of confidence in what you're doing makes all the difference. So I'm just going to drop a, a little bit of water on top of each of this little bit of powder that I've just mixed up. I'm going to start with my 
My thinking behind colouring an image like this is I'm going to start with the biggest area. So I'm using the copper and I'm just going to run my brush over it. And this is a beautiful stamp. Um, hopefully very shortly here in Adelaide, uh, classes are going to resume back to normal and I'm going to be using this stamp in a Copic class. Uh, my ladies are going to love me for it and hopefully towards the end of the month uh, I will be able to do that. In South Australia our restrictions have e uh, eased up quite nicely and the... I didn't make up enough here, hang on. And... Because we have locked our borders down to Victoria, sorry Victorians, but you know, um, I think that the classes will be able to um, resume here. So the Copic class will come up with that. So you'll note this is on the, on the flat cardstock, not watercolour. So I need to work quite confidently and just get it done. Is anyone timing me? I really should have been timing this to show you that it can be quick and easy. Um, okay, that works. I also want to do my berries next. And so I've got, oops, that's a lot, some autumn maple crimson, which is this beautiful crimson colour where I'm just going to colour these little berries in. And like I said, being, being loose will make all the difference. Less perfection. Learn to let go of perfect and you'll find that it... I'm pretty sure these bits here are not supposed to be um, berries, but you know what? They are now. Um, but yeah, letting go of perfect can create something that looks absolutely gorgeous and can look really, really pretty. So a um, bit of green now for the leaves. And I'll take some photos of these and post them when I'm done. I'll just allow them to dry. What my next step will be after this is I will add a sentiment or trim them down to sit on the front of a card. Add a, a sentiment to them. And if I don't use a sentiment stamp, I will hand write a little sentiment. Uh, probably add some string like I did with the alcohol ink cards yesterday. String makes a perfect quick little embellishment doesn't have to be perfect uh, and I will mat it on some black and then I've got my my card front done so this is the brown the brown's a bit boring so I've just popped a bit of red over the top for shading and like I said I'm only mixing this with water and this is on the flat white cardstock not watercolor paper oh i haven't colored in the middle of my i think for the middle of my sunflowers or whichever flower they are today i need a little gold whack that on there and there you go I'm pretty happy with that. I reckon that was probably under two minutes. So nice and simple and it works quite well. Um, my other flowers, so that's dried up quite nicely on the watercolour paper. So I will cut that out and mount that onto a piece of black. Um, or maybe something with a pop of red might be quite nice. My pretty dresses from before, they've dried up a treat. And the, the magicals of, Magical Shakers have also got a shimmer. So this one has actually got a gold shimmer that's sitting on top of that beautiful time travel teal. Really, really pretty. And then the pink one is exactly the same. So because the pink one, I use the Bougainvillea Fuchsia. The Bougainvillea Fuchsia has actually got a purple shimmer and the purple shimmer is sitting down here and looks absolutely lovely. So I will cut that out and mat it onto 
probably maybe a piece of gold or something like that. So simple and effective. Um, the couple of backgrounds that I did earlier, they have dried. So the backgrounds are fantastic. So this is the two colors using, uh, what did we use? Time Travel Teal and French Lilac Violet. So looking very cool. And the other one here on the watercolor paper. Now, I don't know if you'll notice, but, and if it shows up on camera, there's these little bits here, these little chunks that haven't quite dissolved. Now, I left that there on purpose. Hang on. Where are we? I've left that, there you go, you can see them there. Left them there on purpose because what will happen is when they're dry, those bits will brush off. So this is why you need to dissolve all of those elements with your water spray. Um, I Because they're still wet, I can pick them up with my paintbrush and reactivate them. Um, but they really do need to be dissolved or they're going to brush off on your work. The Lindy's Sprays and the Lindy's Magicals are all 15% off this weekend. So um, I don't want to be an enabler, but seriously, it is one of the best products on the market to use. Um, like I mentioned in the video yesterday, I've been working and teaching in the scrapbooking industry here in Adelaide and South Australia and New Zealand um, for nearly 18 years. So um, I know I only look 22, but what is important to me is a product that has got longevity and Lindy's have been around for 22, 24 years. They are a family business based in Washington. They are, they're, they're not made in China. They are packaged in their family garage. They know their stuff. And for me, that's important. So um, this color here is the Bratwurst Brown. And brown's not a color. It's made up of lots of different colors. So can you see there's blue and pink and yellow and orange coming up out of that? Absolutely lovely. The more water you add, the more the pigments are going to come together. And I could just sit and do this all day. It rocks my world. Um, anyone who places an order over the weekend will receive a little handwritten thank you note from me. Um, some of you who have ordered with me previously will notice that you get one in your order. Uh, see if I can find one here on my desk. I was making some more last night. No, disappeared. Um, they were all made using Lindy's sprays and Lindy's magical. So I will sit and hand write a little note to each and every one of you who places an order. So you'll get a lovely little bit of, um, you'll get a lovely little, uh, a handmade bit of art in your, in your order using Lindy's. So you can see how amazing they are up close as well. Um, so if you come back in about, 15 to 20 minutes time I will put a photo up of my finished cards that I have made using these stamps so just to recap what we did uh, I pre-stamped some images using black archival ink on plain cardstock and watercolor cardstock and you will find um, you have to use the black archival ink or the water is going to make it run I then use the magicals with some water and painted on that image, uh, painted that color on. Yes, Vicky, that was a giggle for you. Um, and I, that that's just come up gorgeous. So this is on the flat cardstock. This one is on the watercolor cardstock. Both very effective. The flower, I did exactly the same thing. I used watercolor paper. I used flat cardstock and the Lindy's with our backgrounds here and our purple and teal background here. I did that little sprinkle and spritz technique to show you that you can create a lovely background that you can then die cut or stamp on top of. Um, these are a die as well, so they're permanent. You're going to get a beautiful image that is permanent. 
It also means that if you lean over and dip your boobs in it, it's a permanent addition to your boobs. Um, but it's not supposed to be hard, guys. If, if, it's, if it's hard, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> um, so jump online, 15% off all Lindy's this weekend, 15% off stamps, stencils, and paper packs. Um, late yesterday, the new Uniquely Creative gums and roses paper came in. I might do a quick little video of what that looks like um, in about half an hour's time. If not, um, I will be back here this afternoon at two o'clock uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time for my last class of the weekend, which is the art journal class uh, where I'm gonna create an art journal page. No idea what I'm going to do yet at all but I'll cross that hurdle when I get to it. Um, something else I wanna mention, if you have already placed an order this weekend and paid for postage, if you place another order today because you've got to have something, uh, just select pick up and I will combine all your orders together in one parcel to save you dollars because, you know, that's what we want to do. So I hope you're all having a fantastic day. If you give me 15 minutes to finish these cards, maybe 20, um, I think I need a coffee. Um, oh, hey there from Peru. How are you, sweetheart? Um, and yeah, look, I'll, I'll put the photos up shortly. Have a fantastic day. Wash your hands, kiss your family, tell them that you love them and thank you for your business.